What's up guys, this is Ty again, your online personal trainer. And in this video tutorial, I wanna talk about the five biggest mistakes that people make that prevents them from reaching their fitness goals. So let me go ahead and get right to it. The number one mistake that people make when um, they go and exercise, right? And there's many trainers that will argue with me about this, and that's only because they haven't done enough experimentation and research like I have with some of the people that, with the training programs I've done in the past. And I would say that the number one mistake that people make is overtraining. Why is overtraining so difficult and to understand and, so, uh, and why is it so detrimental and dangerous to the human body? The reason why is that if you ask yourself, if you've trained in the past and why you didn't stick to the workout routine that you did, it's probably because you overtrain your body. And when you overtrain your body, what happens is it destroys it physically. And when your body gets weak physically and it gets so sore and to where you can't even move no more, your abs can't move, your back can't move, your arms, if somebody comes and touches your chest muscles, you're so sore that you're hurting, what it does is it, that it destroys you mentally because your mind and your body are linked together as one. So when the body gets weaker because it's too sore or because it's overexhausted or because it's uh, been overworked, what happens is it drains you mentally and when it does that, what it'll do is it'll destroy your motivation and your perseverance to want to continue training. And that's very dangerous. And, and I, I highly recommend that you guys be very careful about this. And out of the 18 years I've been training people, this is the number one mistake that people make. It's not with nutrition, it's not with anything. Because if you overtrain and you, you, you get your body so worn out that you're mentally, you can't stay focused and motivated to continue training and eating correctly, then you're not going to get any results even if you're on the best training program in the world. So be very careful about this. And some of the signs that you're overtraining are very simple. If you're training, for example, you're lifting weights and your muscles are sore for more than like two or three days, it's guaranteed that you're overtraining. If you're mentally exhausted, if week after week you feel like, man, I just don't want to go work out anymore, or I just don't feel like it, and you don't have that strong desire, and that motivation that you do like you would at the beginning of the year when you have a New Year's resolution and, and your goal is to go out there and tackle the world, tackle the gym, and come on and, and do your best at the gym, then that, it's a sure sign that you're, you're, um, you're overtrained. And to prove this, if you're feeling this way, I recommend you take like five to six days off where you don't do any kind of weight training at all or any kind of cardio training. And the only thing you do is just simply go and walk your dog or just walk a mile a day or maybe a few blocks up and down the road and that's it. And you'll be shocked at how within five days that you'll be mentally, your body will recover from it. Mentally, you'll be clearer and sharper and you'll be able to be motivated to go back to the gym and work out again. So that's one of the ways that you can tell. The other way that you can tell that you're being overtrained is when you're at school or at work and you can't concentrate on your work no more. If you've been doing the same job or been studying the same thing for a long time, you'll notice that you have a certain speed at which you remember things. And I'll give you an example. For example, uh, when I remember back when I was trying to learn how to play the piano, it usually only takes me a, um, a, uh, maybe like two or three days to memorize a song. And during this period of my time, when I was in my early 20s, where I was like, severely overtrained, there were times when I would, it would take me literally like three weeks just to memorize one song on the piano. And that, that, and that never dawned on me until the weeks that I took off and during the weeks that I had my rest period, within two or three days I would remember a whole song and be able to me play it and back from memory without even looking at the music sheets. And because of that, it really made me realize how severely overtrained I was. There was another time where I was very sick for several weeks and when I came back, from the, the, the illness, I was actually stronger than I was the, prior to the two weeks that I had taken off for my illness. So these are the different symbols that, that let me know that these indicators with myself and with many of my clients in the past that lets me know how dangerous the overtraining is. So keep that in mind guys, that if your mind gets weak because your body is weak, then the chances are you're not going to be motivated to continue working out. And like I said, no matter how good a program that you're on, if you don't can do it consistently enough, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. Next, the second biggest mistake that people make that prevents them from reaching their fitness goals is what I call over-dieting. And over-dieting simply means that, it, uh, that you're going too hardcore with your dieting, meaning that before you're eating a certain way every day, you have a certain type of nutritional plan, and then all of a sudden you decide that, hey, it's New Year's and I wanna go on this craze and this resolution, and I just wanna go in there and just pound it hard and just eat 100% correctly. Please don't do this because change doesn't happen overnight. It happens 
in very small incremental steps. And the way I recommend that you deal with your nutrition and your diet is to take one small step at a time. So let's just say that your goal is to cut back on eating any more sugars, right? Any um, artificial sugars in sodas and candy bars and such things like that. And let's just say, for example, that you've been drinking six cans of soda a day, right? You don't go and go cold turkey on it. Your goal would be that in the first week to cut back from six cans of soda to like maybe four cans of soda. And then the next week, cut it down to like two cans of soda. And the third week, to cut it down to one can. And maybe after a month, you cut out the sodas completely. Now, we live in an instant gratification world, and we don't. We want things to happen overnight. If we have a wedding in two months, we want to look skinny now. If we have a football game coming up next week, we want to drop weight and be run fast and be muscular uh, right away, right? But things... Guys, what I teach you is a lifetime of change and your lifetime of fitness, okay? And to make a lifetime change to the human body and not something that happens overnight. If you're looking for something that happens overnight, I'm going to invite you to go somewhere else to another website because here I want long-term goals and I want long-term gains for my clients, right? So make sure that when you get into, you don't go cold turkey on the things that you're doing wrong and slowly integrate and slowly replace the bad habits that you have with the good habits so that you can make the permanent changes to your body. The third big mistake that people make and that prevents them from reaching their fitness goals is what I call lack of proper training and education. They have no clue what they're doing. They have no idea about proper nutrition. They have no idea of what proper uh, eating habits and training habits are. And they just go out there and it's a monkey see, monkey do approach. They go to the gym, they go there, and I see so many people, uh, for example, girls would come there with their girlfriends at the beginning of the year for their New Year's resolution or before their wedding, and they just go in there and just start watching other skinny girls work out and try to copy them. But keep in mind that may not be the best approach for you. I always recommend that you go to the gym and you have a workout routine that is very disciplined, that's very regimented, so that you know exactly what it is that you're doing, right? And there's, there's a preset program, there's a, there's a plan, there's some kind of game plan on what it is that you're gonna do to get your body into shape, whether you're trying to get leaner, you're trying to get more muscular, get stronger, get faster, whatever it is that your goals are, right? Have some kind of game plan so you don't go in into the blind. And if you don't have a game plan, make sure that you go to my Get Started page and look at my program and see how to develop a personal training program for yourself. I have some great videos in there that will guide you through it. So don't try to figure it out on yourself, right? Figure it out on your own. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. I've done it. Other trainers have done it. Just learn from us and apply it towards your personal life so that you don't waste time right here, right? So that you don't make the same mistake that most of the clients that I've seen and most of the people, gym members I've seen at the gym that they don't have the proper training and education. Now, if you don't have the money to hire me or other trainers um, at the gym to personally train you, you have absolutely no excuses for not getting the proper training and education because I have everything that you possibly can need to get into shape on my website. So you just browse through and go through the Get Started page and go through it step by step and you'll get what you need. The fourth biggest mistake that I've seen, and I want you guys to be aware of this so you can avoid it also, is having a negative mindset and environment. And what do I mean by that? If you come into the fitness world and you're trying to get in shape and you're trying to get more leaner and more muscular, and your mindset is that this is not gonna happen to me, I'm too skinny for this, I'm too big for this, I'm too fat, I don't have time, or this is not worth it, or I don't know what I'm doing, all these different negative mindsets, right? Um, my spouse not like me no more once I get skinnier, or my, my wife might leave me because I'm getting more muscular, or my girlfriend might get jealous because I have a six pack now. All these negative mindsets will prevent you from learning how and, and improving your body shape, right? And the other thing is, in addition to the negativity and the mindset that's in your mind, is the negative people that's around you in the negative environment that you're in. If you're trying to lose weight and you have a spouse or a, or, or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a buddy or a classmate or a parent that doesn't support your goals, it's very difficult to reach uh, the shape that you want to be in. Why? Because in you, you're working hard for them when you go home. You're gonna spend time with these. You're only spending one hour at the gym and then you go home and you're spending the rest of the day with your spouse and they're saying that, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I'll give you an example. I had one client and within one month, I dropped almost 20 pounds of body fat off of her. But now when she went home, her husband didn't like it. 
He didn't like it because he was a former football player and he didn't like the fact that his wife was getting thinner and that meant that he had to get in shape and he didn't want to get off the couch. He didn't want to go spend time at the gym to get in shape. And he knew what shape that he can get into because he used to be a, a former uh, football linebacker. So he was in really good shape. And she even showed me pictures of him. And she kept telling me that she was very concerned that he would stop paying for her training because he didn't want to, not because it costed too much money, but it was because he didn't feel like going to work out because if she got in shape, right, because they were both overweight and if she got the fat off of her, then he would have to go to the gym and do it too because he couldn't see himself walking around overweight with a skinny wife, right? So what he did was that he just cut off her gym membership and cut off her training so that she couldn't go train so that he didn't have to train. So that kind of negativity is not going to help you achieve your goals. So I would recommend that you have a few people, a few close friends that support your goals, that can believe in you and make sure that they recognize what you're doing and ask them to keep you accountable to your fitness goals, whether it's nutrition goals or your strength training goals or your muscular goals or whatever it is that your fitness goals are. Right? So that you are in a positive mindset and you're in a positive environment that will enhance you and push, push you and encourage you to succeed in your fitness goals. The last mistake that I want to talk about that prevents people from reaching their fitness goals is they have a short-term mindset instead of having a long-term goal and a long-term plan. We live in an instant gratification world, especially here in North America and the United States. And we want everything happening right now. We want it today. We, want it. we don't want it yesterday. Even if I've seen clients that come in and they, they need to drop 100 pounds, but they want it today. They want it this week, right? And you have to keep in mind, folks, that it did not take you a week to gain an excess of 20 pounds of body fat. You have to give yourself time for your body to, to, to shed the body fat, to get rid of it. it. It takes time to build the muscle. But if you have a long-term mindset where you don't give up, where you plug away consistently one, one piece every day, one exercise every day, eat weekly, week in, week out, then you will reach your goals in the long term. But most people, they only have a short-term mindset. New Year's is coming around. They just want to get in shape for New Year's. Spring break comes around, they want to get in shape for spring break. And it's very, very difficult, right? But if you have a, a positive mindset where you say, hey, this is a lifestyle that I'm going to adapt and that I'm going to have the body of my dreams and I want to be in shape year long, not just for New Year's, not just for my birthday party or not just for spring break or for summer break. And that you're looking at a long-term goal no matter what time of the year it is then by all means, you will reach your goals and you will have the body that you want. So just keep that in mind, folks. So just to wrap it up here, if you eliminate these five mistakes right here, guys, you will reach your fitness goals. It's only a matter of time. If you eliminate the overtraining, which is the number one mistake that people make in training that destroys their fitness goals, right? The number two is over dieting. Don't go crazy with your diet. Take one thing that you, you think that is the biggest cause of you gaining excess body fat or not gaining muscle, get rid of that problem. So let's say, for example, that drinking too many sodas each day is what's causing you to gain all that weight. The first thing I would do is work on that. And then after that, I would work on getting rid of the candy or the chips or whatever, right? So one step at a time, folks. Don't try to do it all in one day because that does not work. The next number three is lack of proper training education. Now that I've got this website up and I can help you and all my other clients, there's absolutely no excuse for this because there's so many good information on the website, right? And if you are not sure, then just look at the information I have on this site. It's already filtered out for you from my years of experience in training with nutrition and athletic performance. I've already filtered out what the bullshit is from the real deal. So just follow what I'm showing you and don't try to reinvent the wheel. Number four is having a negative mindset. Make sure that you get rid of that mindset that I can't do this, it'll never happen to me. Oh, I've had two kids already, I'm never gonna get to my high school shape again. That's a bunch of bullshit. Yes, yes, you can. If you've been skinny before, you can get back to being skinny again. Don't let anyone tell you that that's not possible. Now, if you were in junior high school and, and you weighed 200 pounds back in junior high and now you have two kids and you're weighing 250 and you say, hey, I wanna get down to 130, 140 pounds, if you've never been at 130 pounds before, maybe there's going to be a challenge. But if you were a 130 pound cheerleader and you were 5 foot 10 back in high school and now you got two kids and you, you have an extra 20, 30, 40 pounds of body fat on you and you need to get rid of it, don't, tell, don't let nobody tell you that you can't get back down to that shape again. It's because they don't know. 
I've seen it happen hundreds of times. It can be done. If other girls have done it, you can too. And last, right? The short-term mindset versus the long-term mindset. Get rid of that instant gratification, guys. Get rid of it. Have a long-term mindset. Have a goal set that this is the lifestyle that you want to live. This is the lifestyle. You want to have the body that you, you've always wanted and you're always going to be feeling comfortable no matter what time of the year. You Don't wait until the New Year's to be in shape, guys. You can be in shape the whole year long. Don't wait until spring break comes and to go to the beach and get into your beach body shape, right? Have that beach body shape all year long. You should be anywhere, anytime, be able to just rip off your shirt and be happy that and be be confident in the shape that you're in. You shouldn't have to wait until spring break to do that. Thanks for watching this video, guys. And if you really like it, make sure that you post it on your Facebook, send it to your friends, especially the ones that need help in this matter, that's losing faith in it, or, or is losing motivation in it. Maybe some of the, and especially your friends, the ones that keep starting a workout routine and then quit, start and then quit. Send them these top five mistakes so that they can stop you know, that nonsense, that cycle of starting and stopping so that they can get the results that they need. Thanks for watching this video, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment box, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.